So I've just come downstairs and I have discovered that a certain someone decided they wanted to play Warhammer in the middle of the night. Now these guys have been sat on my shelf for a while, but for their own safekeeping, I should really move them up to the work in progress shelf, out of reach of tiny paws and teeth. Now the only problem with this is that this shelf is looking pretty full already. If I'm going to put my Dominion stuff up here, then I'll need to clear some space first. So let's pick a model from the backlog and get cracking with some paint. My name's Josh and welcome to the Pickle Jar. Hello and welcome to another painting video. Today I'm going to be working on the limited edition Orc Gorzai Git Stomp, which I got early on this year. Now this is a really cool model and although I don't play Orcs in Warhammer 40k, I am easily tempted to paint a lovely bit of plastic. Now he's already built and cleaned thankfully, thank you to past me, so we can get cracking straight away. Now I'll start off with a standard prime and zenithal through the airbrush. Now I've been using the airbrush for a couple of months now and I've slowly been getting to grips with it more and more and I am now fairly confident with it. I definitely think the results I'm getting are a lot smoother than they were when I first started using it. I've been thinking about doing a bit of a beginner's airbrush video like a sort of by beginner for beginner video sort of thing answering all the silly little questions that I had when I first started using an airbrush because not a lot of people seem to be answering those. So if you'd like to see that in the future let me know down below in the comments. Now doing the zenithal highlight on a miniature is one of my favourite things to do with the airbrush. I think I've said this before, but it really is because once you've finished putting the zenithal on, I could quite happily put the basing material on and just leave the miniature as it is. It looks really nice, all the highlights pulled out with the ink and all the shadowed areas showing through with the base coat. I just think it looks really, really cool. I don't know what you guys think, but I always appreciate a lovely zenithal highlight. Now for this model, I thought I'd try some more natural tones as a base layer and then apply the green later on. So first of all, I watered down some Screamer pink and painted this into all the recessed areas. The idea here was to try something similar to the Blood Bowl Goblins that I did using the skin method that I picked up from Spud over on the Chilling War Gamers. In the end though, I'm not sure that this red ended up actually making any difference on this paint job. So if you are trying this technique yourself, you can probably just skip this step entirely. But for now all I'm doing is going through all the recessed areas with the watered down screamer pink, all the sort of it gaps between the muscles, the definition and then underneath the arms and things like that in all the shadowed areas just to add a different colour to the shadows rather than just leaving them black. Once that was all on, I took some Kislev flesh, watered it down and applied this to all the rest of the skin area. Now I'm working very rough and ready right now, not worrying too much about getting smooth blends or transitions. We're going to be going back to the airbrush in a bit and that will tidy everything up and smooth out all the blends. Now I'm not worried too much either about getting a super smooth layer here because if a little bit of the black primer or the white zenithal is left showing from underneath, that will be fine because when we put the green over the top, it will create some nice variations in this skin tone and just those sort of little imperfections that you should have in skin. Now it's time to go back to the airbrush. I'm using one of the new Citadel Paints Auric Flesh as the main green for the skin. Now this is a lovely colour and it looks absolutely amazing through the airbrush. One of my new favourites that I'm sure I will be adding into my regular palette rotation from now on. Now I'm just feathering the trigger with this and I don't want to go too heavy all at once. One thing that I have learned with the airbrush is that trigger control is a lot more important than a lot of the other things. You can have all your air pressure and everything set right but if you open up the throttle and blast that miniature with paint then you might as well not have bothered. Now I do like the colour that we had with the auric flesh through the airbrush but to add a little bit more depth to the shapes and also just to tint it all I'm using Coelia Green Shade. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, that's what I'm going with, Coelia. Now I'm applying this all over the skin making sure not to let it pull too much and to avoid the flatter areas so as not to get those horrible tide marks that you can often get using washers. With 
this in place, we're almost done with the skin. I go back in with a mix of Kislev Flesh and Auric Flesh, about a one to one ratio, watered down a little bit to a heavy glaze consistency. Now all I'm doing here is applying this to the various muscle definitions and other raised areas. This might look pretty bright going on, but once it dries, it darkens down quite a lot and it looks awesome. I'll come back to the face later on, but for now, let's get some more of the details painted in so we can see the area around the skin and see the piece start to come together as a whole. Now some people like to paint up in stages, they do all the base layers, then all the highlights and shadows so that the entire model gets worked on all at once and it's not fully finished until the very end, which makes sense I guess. Now other people like to hyper focus on one area, painting that up to completion before starting on another area, often working from the deepest areas of the model that would be the hardest to get to without getting paint on other areas. Now I think I fall somewhere in the middle, I tend to pick the part of the model that is either the biggest, the focal point, or just something that I'm excited to paint. And I'll work on that either to completion or near enough. And then I'll go back and paint in the details and the areas around that to give me an idea of how it's framed. Then if I decide I need to add any extra bits or pieces, then I'll go back and finish them off. I'm not sure if I'd say that it's the most efficient way to paint, but it's certainly the way that I've found to be the most enjoyable. Now before we go back to the face, I decided to try a new product on all the metallic areas. I got this rust effect from Vallejo or Vallejo a while back and I haven't used it, so I figured why not try it on this one-off random model. Now, if I'm honest, I wasn't particularly impressed with this paint. I can get the same kind of results that I got with this just by using a watered down brown paint, so I'm not sure if I just didn't use it right or if it's just not what I thought it was. I, just, I dotted it around, it didn't really add any texture, it was just like a wash. Maybe I've not shook it up enough, maybe I've not used it right, I'm not sure. I will try it again in the future, but I'm not particularly impressed with it at the moment. So to fix this, I went in with some riser rust to add some more bright areas of rust. And then I went in once that was dotted around and added the Nylac Oxide to a few select areas. I wanted to add all the weathering and stuff to the metal because I like my oaks to be a bit battered and a bit run down, but also because adding these like bright orange and blue and things like that to all the metal work just adds a little bit more color interest to the model overall. There's quite a bit of metal on this guy between his sword, his gun, his little pouches and stuff and his little bits of detail. So adding these bits of extra color just thrown in just really helps the piece tie together and just brings a bit more interest, something, something nice to look at. Now we are back to the face. Now I wanted to add some more detail to the face to really help it pop and stand out. Now there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I just go back in with various shades of pinks and purples, various sort of skin tones using Kislev flesh and added them around the mouth, shading back and forth between these brighter different colors and the original sort of auric green Kislev flesh highlight that we did. That's about as much as I can tell you because apparently, I decided that I was camera shy for the rest of this section and decided not to film any of this stage. Top job there, Josh. Top job. I tidied up a lot of the little details, added the basing material and then called this miniature finished. I've had a lot of fun working on this model and I've enjoyed trying some different styles and a couple of different colour combinations and it's given me some ideas for my Dominion Oryx so hopefully I'll get some more work done on them at some point in the near future. What do you think to the finished piece? Do you like the skin and the rust effects? Do you think there's anything that I could have done differently? Let me know down below in the comments. That's going to do it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did be sure to leave a like down below and if you want to see more from me then pop along to one of my live streams that I do every Wednesday night right here on The Pickle Jar. If you want to help support the channel there are a number of ways you can do so, we have our affiliate and sponsor links down below in the description or you can do what all of these amazing people did and join our membership program right here on YouTube. However you choose to support us, whether it's via these sort of methods or if it's just by watching the videos and checking out the live streams, it's all massively appreciated, so thank you very much. That's all from me and I'll see you next week with another video.